Welcome to BSC Statistics students. Uh, we have discussed the test for uh, single mean. Now, in this lesson, in this uh, class, uh, we discuss test for two means of large sample test. We are discussing large sample test. In which, uh, in this class, uh, we discuss test for two means. That is, test for difference of means. That is, uh, if you take two samples uh, from a population or two different populations. Uh, both are in the same sense uh, which is uh, going to be compared. Uh, in the purpose of comparison, uh, we consider two samples. Okay, if you consider two samples, uh, two samples from a population uh, or two different populations, uh, if you consider two different samples. Okay, I consider, for example, x1, x2 and so on, xn1. It is a sample, it is a sample which is drawn from, of size n1, which is drawn from a particular population, first of all. Similarly, uh, for example, you consider y1, y2 and so on, yn2 are the sample observations. It is drawn, it is a, um, considered, it is a second sample of size n2 drawn from another population. So, two normal populations you consider and uh, draw two particular samples, uh, one from population 1, one from population 2. Uh, this is of size n1, this is of size n2. I uh, hope you it is clear. Uh, and uh, x is following, that is all x is following normal distribution with mean mu1 and variance sigma1 square. And similarly, y follows uh, a normal distribution with mean mu2 and variance sigma2 square. This is what the basic uh, uh, distribution we are considering, right? Since of the uh, large sample test, we are considering uh, the two different normal populations and from which you have drawn these two particular samples uh, respectively. Now, if you consider null hypothesis H0, which is nothing but mu1 is equal to mu2. Uh, what is this? Uh, two population means are equal. The first statement is two population means are equal because mu1, mu2 represents two population means. Population mean of the first population, population mean of the second population. Like that you consider um, second population mean, first population mean. They are equal. Second statement we can give there is no significance difference between the uh, two um, sample means. That is also we can state from this. And uh, we can easily also state another one uh, that is the sample, the two samples are drawn from two different populations, okay. If you consider alternative hypothesis H1, H1 which is which can be considered as mu1 not equal to mu2 or mu1 greater than mu2 or mu1 less than mu2. There are two, uh, three different uh, 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 alternative hypothesis we can consider. See statement three kinds of uh, alternative hypothesis. Uh, the first one refers uh, to tail test, uh, and second, uh, um, second and third, these two are ref, uh, refers one tail test. Okay, leave it and come to that uh, alternative hypothesis statement. We can form uh, if the null hypothesis uh, two population means are equal. We can state here two population means are not equal. Here the null hypothesis. If you state uh, uh, there is no significance difference between the two sample means. The alternative hypothesis we can state that uh, uh, there is a significance difference between uh, two sample means. That is also we can state here. These are the uh, null and alternative hypothesis for which uh, we have to consider test statistic now. The third point, this is first point, this is the second point and this is the third point. Test statistic. The test the test statistic uh, it is going to be considered for uh, you have to construct a test statistic for two means which for which I am considering for difference of means in the small sample if you consider difference of means uh, small sample the mean of the first sample x1 x2 xn1 you consider x bar and mean of the second sample you consider y bar the difference is x bar minus y bar that you consider as a t that is t is equal to x bar minus y bar. So, for which if you uh, define test statistic z is equal to x bar minus y bar that is t minus expectation of t that is expectation of x bar minus y bar 
divided by standard error of x bar minus y bar. This is what the standard normal variate. If we consider this is standard normal variate, it follows at n01. Uh, hope you understand. This is what the test statistics is going to be considered. For which you have to calculate these two. Expectation of x bar minus y bar. Standard error of x bar minus y bar. Obviously, from the we have, we have stated clearly x follows normal distribution with mean uh, uh, mu 1 and variance sigma 1 square for the first sample. And the sec for the second sample, second population, y follows normal distribution with mean mu 2 and variance sigma 2 square. If we consider these two statements, uh, we can easily calculate uh, expectation of x bar minus y bar. Expectation of x bar minus y bar is nothing but expectation of x bar minus expectation of y bar. What is expectation of x bar? That is nothing but mu 1. And as x, what is expectation of y bar? It is mu 2. Uh, for this, uh, if you state uh, the distribution of x bar and y bar, if x follows this, uh, the distribution of x bar is uh, x bar follows normal distribution with mean mu 1 and variance sigma 1 square by n 1 is the distribution of x bar. Similarly, if you consider the distribution of y bar, it is uh, nothing but uh, normal distribution. Y bar follows a normal distribution with mean mu 2 and variance sigma 2 square by n 2. If you state, you can understand that expectation of x bar is equal to mu 1 and uh, uh, variance of x bar is equal to sigma 1 square divided by n 1. Similarly, uh, from the distribution of y bar, variance of uh, expectation of x bar, y bar is equal to first of all, it is mu 2 and uh, variance of y bar, variance of y bar, we can write it is sigma 2 square by n 2. These are the values we can consider. Uh, so, from this, uh, if you start the calculation, expectation of x bar, I calculate again. Expectation of x bar minus y bar is equal to expectation of x bar minus expectation of y bar. This is what the calculation. Expectation of x bar is mu 1 minus expectation of y bar is mu 2. So, I have calculated again. And now you calculate the first variance. To calculate standard error, you have to calculate variance first. So, variance of x bar minus y bar, as we know, variance of x minus y is also variance of x plus y. Variance of x plus variance of y. So, variance of x bar plus variance of y bar. What is variance of x bar? It is nothing but sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2. Variance of y bar is sigma 2 square by n2. So, this is what variance of x bar minus y bar, which implies we can write uh, Standard error of x bar minus y bar, it is nothing but uh, the square root of variance of x bar minus y bar, which is, uh, it is nothing but square root of sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2. Hope you understand. This is what uh, the variance, standard error of x bar minus y bar. Now, from this, uh, we can calculate now uh, the test statistic, uh, that is uh, for uh, x bar minus y bar, test statistics for x bar minus y bar. What you can calculate? Now, you can calculate uh, the test statistics z is equivalent to It becomes, is it clear, visible, right? So, one minute here. Yeah. So, if we consider z is equivalent to it is, uh, uh, it can be defined as x bar minus y bar. Is it, is it not clear? Yeah, now it is clear. Minus of expectation of x bar minus y bar divided by standard error of x bar minus y bar which follows n01 which means z uh, is equivalent to be now you can consider x bar minus y bar minus we have calculated expectation of x bar minus y bar it is mu1 minus mu2 so therefore it is mu1 minus mu2 and uh, divided by standard error of x bar minus y bar we have calculated it is square root of square root of sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2 which follows n01 this is what the test statistic we have calculated now test statistic under h0 we have to calculate test statistic under h0 so under null hypothesis h0 we have to calculate test statistics. I am calculating. So, under H0, 
test test statistic under h0 i'm calculating which is z is equal to v what is h0 mu1 is equal to mu2 so that is mu1 minus mu2 will be zero it becomes zero so therefore x bar minus y bar divided by square root of sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2 have you understand this which follows n01 standard normal distribution it's a standard normal variator right so if you consider h0 is mu1 is equal to mu2 then mu1 minus mu2 becomes zero so therefore z is equal to x bar minus y bar by square root of sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2 this is the part which follows n01 so this is what the test statistic but again we have three cases so i explain three cases case one two three right so if you consider case one two three so now i write uh, again i write the test statistic under h naught uh, which probably it is uh, better to write the value of test statistic under h naught so i'm writing test statistic uh, statistic under h naught under the null hypothesis h naught if you consider under h naught what is h naught mu1 is equal to mu2 uh, in the under the null hypothesis h naught test statistic becomes x bar minus y bar divided by square root of sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2 which follows n01 this is what our uh, test statistic under h naught in which uh, now case one we study three cases there are three cases and that is three formulas you have again so in the in which the case one what is case one if uh, sigma one square is equal to sigma two square let it be is equal to sigma square if you consider like this uh, which is uh, known which is known sigma 1 square you remember sigma 1 square is equal to sigma 2 square that is two population variants are equal let it be sigma square and is known this value is known then in which the case z is equivalent to be x bar minus y bar divided by sigma square sigma sigma 1 square is sigma square sigma 2 square is sigma square if you take common sigma square that is sigma square multiplied by a 1 by n 1 plus 1 by n 2 if you take uh, uh, outside the uh, square root, uh, say square root of sigma square becomes sigma. So I'm writing sigma. Sigma multiplied by 1 by n1 plus 1 by n2. This is what the uh, test statistic under H0 in the case 1. If sigma 1 square is equal to sigma 2 square is equal to sigma square. Remember, this is what case 1. Hope you understand this sigma is known value. We can consider sigma is a known value, right? That is case 1. Now we discuss case 2. What is case 2? If uh, sigma 1 square and sigma 2 square, sigma 1 square and uh, sigma 2 square, which is equivalent and uh, uh, not known, sigma 1 square is equal to sigma 2 square is equal to sigma square, let it be and uh, it is, uh, is not known not specified and uh, in which uh, in this particular case sigma square is going to be estimated by a common estimator from the two population two sample standard deviations that is sigma 1 square cron is going to be estimated with n1 s1 square plus n2 s2 square divided by n1 plus n2 what is s1 square what is s2 square S1 square is the sample variance of the first sample. S2 square is the sample variance of the second sample. So these two are the sample variance of first and second samples respectively. Okay, the formula 1 by n1 summation xi minus x bar whole square. S2 square formula 1 by n2 summation yi minus, let it be yj, yj minus y bar whole square. So this is what the formulas of sigma square cron. So let you consider sigma square cron because sigma 1 square sigma 2 square are equal we have considered sigma square sigma square is going to be estimated therefore sigma square cron so right so therefore sigma square cron i'm writing so sigma 1 square cron sigma 2 square cron which is equal to sigma square 
that is what the estimation and it's it is known then in such a case test statistic under h naught z is equivalent to b x bar minus y bar simply it is also you can write sigma cron multiplied by square root of 1 by n 1 plus 1 by n 2 uh, which means which follows n 0 1 so but you have calculated sigma square here what about sigma cron sigma cron is square root of this that is uh, where sigma cron is equal to square root of n1 s1 square plus n2 s2 square divided by n1 plus n2 this is what the formula of sigma cron standard deviation of this uh, sigma cron square right sigma square cron so now it is sigma cron is nothing but square root of this so that is the formula of sigma cron this is case 2 case 2 case 1 is sigma square is equal to sigma 1 square is equal to sigma 2 square is equal to sigma square is known case 2 is sigma 1 square is equal to sigma 2 square is equal to sigma square is not known the two cases case 3 now this is uh, one general uh, formula we use uh, when sigma square are not known if sigma square sigma 1 square and sigma 2 square are not known which means uh, they are not specified whether equal or not equal that's why we have, that's why we have considered not equal in a case where sigma 1 square and sigma 2 square are not known what we do then in such a case sigma 1 square cron is going to be estimated with s1 square and sigma 2 square cron it is going to be estimated with s2 square this is the sample variance this is the population variance of the first sample first first sample first population and this is uh, sample variance this is the population variance of the second sample and second population so if the population variance is not known we are going to be estimated with s sample variance under as n tends to infinity why because if you have considered a large sample that is n1 tends to infinity n2 tends to infinity generally i have written n tends to infinity right that is a large sample in a case of large sample this is the this is what the procedure is going to be estimated so we are estimating the values here s1 square s2 square which are estimated with sigma 1 square and, uh, that is sigma 1 square and sigma 2 square which are estimated by s1 square and s2 square okay these are the values are going to be estimated with the help of the sample values s1 square s2 square therefore now test a statistic under h naught remember under h naught it becomes z is equal to x bar minus y bar divided by sigma 1 square cron divided by n1 plus sigma 2 square cron divided by n2 this is the formula is equivalent to be x bar minus y bar divided by under square root of s1 square divided by n1 plus s2 square divided by n2 the small letters s1 s2 so therefore i am writing a little bit care right which follows n01 this is what the uh, second case third case case 3 so these are the three cases we have studied clearly and uh, hope you have understand now the last part fourth part the comparison and conclusion comparison and uh, conclusion what is comparison and conclusion we always calculate modulus of z that is computed value the computed value if you consider modulus of z calculate modulus of z this is a calculated value or computed value and we obtain z alpha that is a significant value or the tabulated value obtained at specified alpha level of significance if it is greater than that is computed value is greater than the tabulated value z alpha it is going to be rejected that null hypothesis h naught is rejected this may be rejected otherwise if modulus of z is less than or equal to z alpha null hypothesis h naught may be accepted it is may be accepted these are the conclusions are going to be drawn with the help of the uh, alpha level of significance and the significant value obtained from the standard normal distribution hope you understand this is what the procedure of the test for two means in a case the large sample large samples so the samples are large samples if you can if we treat a large sample this is what the test process is going to consider the normal distribution is going to be considered and uh, that's suppose this uh, test process is conducted based on the normal distribution since because uh, since the reason why uh, uh, these are uh, samples are considered as a treated as a large samples so i hope you understand these are the 
uh, this is the procedure for test for two means or difference of means in the case of large samples. Thank you, thank you very much.